Hi, this is Steve Feldman, publisher of Floor Covering News, for another edition of Retail Recovery Across America. I'm here with Jeff Mako, Mako's Floor Covering Center in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but today we're not in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're in Fort Myers, Florida, at Haddinger's Flooring, which Mako's bought a couple of years ago? You know, I think it's almost six years ago. It's been a while. Six years ago. Time yeah. flies. Yeah. yeah. So, first, let's talk about Mako's. Mm -hmm. Mako's been in business how long? Uh, 1978. 78. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. Mako's is an NFA retailer, one of the 25, 30 largest retailers in the country. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. um, multifaceted company, builder, right? Commercial. Uh, right. We, we've got a residential division that does replacement remodel. We've got a division that does uh, new construction and then a separate company up north, which is a union-based company that does large commercial, so schools, hospitals, all around the Midwest. You bought Hattinger's, mm -hmm. the Fort Myers store, mm -hmm. six years ago. Correct, yes. What was the impetus for expanding the business into Florida? Uh, well, kind of a lot like what we're dealing with right now. This That was you know around the 2008, 9, 10 area um, when the economy was tanking we decided that we would use this as an opportunity to be more aggressive, and um, it, it fell in our lap nicely. Tom Hattinger did not necessarily want this store. Uh, he wanted to keep his store in Naples. We wanted to be in Fort Myers, so we purchased the store from him uh, at a time when the economy was kind of lousy, but we thought this would be a great time to expand, so it worked out well. How's it worked out for you over the last six, seven years? But better than we had hoped. Um, we, we picked up several large contractors um, uh, and uh, retail business is, is doing well. So it's better than what we had hoped for. Um, you know, our planning w was great and sound and, and the economy kind of rose up and we rode up with it. I want to focus on the mothership. Mm -hmm. Green Bay, Wisconsin, Marcos. Mm -hmm. How many stores? Six retail, um, and then as I mentioned, uh, the commercial division, which is in a separate location. But six retail stores, Northeast Wisconsin. How was business up until, say, mid-March? Record setting. Wow. Um, we were doing the, we were having the best year we could ever have. We were, we were fortunate in that we actually had a two-month backlog of installations up there on the retail side, which is tough because consumers a lot of times don't want to wait. So when March hit and the bottom dropped out, we already had a large backlog of, of work. So our business was doing great up until mid-March when, when the economy shut off. What happened mid-March, April? Did you uh, close? We never closed a day. In the state of Wisconsin, we are considered an essential employer because we're in the construction trade. So we actually closed our doors, uh, but we, we, we were open by appointment. So anybody that wanted to could go in the parking lot and call us and say, I'm Mrs. Smith, I'm here. And then we had our standard uh, protocol, our COVID protocol, where we'd ask specific questions about travel and, and health of everybody in the house. And then we'd let them in. But the doors were locked, but we never literally closed because we took clients every single day. So by the end of April, we were about 30% down uh, from the previous April. Now, when we took our year-to-date numbers, even with a 30% down April, we were still up. For the for the year, uh, so uh, but we took it we took it on the chin in April. What happened in May? Uh, a nice recovery. I think what we started to see was um, consumers were just getting uh, cabin fever. They wanted to get out. So again, we we had kept a very strict protocol uh, as to how we cleaned our stores, how we cleaned our trucks. Uh, keep in mind, of course, we had to contact all of our consumers and then um, ask them if it's still okay if we come to their house. So the majority of the folks said, yes, you can still come. Again, sometimes we would mask up if that's what they wanted or whatever the case may be. Uh, but in any case, um, that was fine with the exception of the state of Michigan. We couldn't do anything in the state of Michigan. No, uh, I'm sorry, we did some hospital work up there, which was considered essential. Um, but uh, uh, we started to see people get a little bit more okay about going out. Um, and so then our traffic ticked up and our volume ticked up. So by the end of May, we were down about 6% from last May. I can tell you that our uh, new construction business didn't slow down, not even a little bit. Um, we, with that, that kept on with, again, certain protocols. Commercial business, pretty much the same. Um, if the job site had its own entrance, we could, even in healthcare, we could keep working. If the job site had an entrance that had to go through the, the main hospital per se, well, that was shut down. 
but uh, for the most part, we kept going. What are you doing to get customers in your store today mm -hmm. that you may not have been doing a couple of months ago or maybe even last year? Well, what we've noticed is the amount of leads that we're getting through the internet have exploded. Uh, if you know, those are up three, four hundred percent. So maybe it's because people are home. So we started a couple of things. What we did was we started a virtual interior design program uh, where a consumer can call us um, and, and uh, they can email pictures of rooms. We can use our room designers and plug the floor that she's looking at in her actual picture. Um, our staff can walk around with iPads in the store uh, and show clients that don't want to come in. Um, we set samples outside the, the store for people that don't want to come in. We'll bring samples to their house and set them on their porch for people that don't want to come in. Uh, but our internet uh, business has gotten a lot more. Um, we, um, I, I think the, I don't know if that's going to stay, continue on, but at this point we're just seeing much more activity. Now I can tell you what we found, Steve, is the consumers, once they start a conversation, once they call the store and they're talking to Steve the designer, not just a person, we found that a lot of defenses come down. Then they feel more comfortable about coming in or letting us go into their house. So it's all about getting that initial first contact, whether it's with the virtual designer or how, however we're doing it online, but we get them to reach out and talk to somebody. And then it's Sue talking to Betty. That we've found to be um, the way to go. Then some of this fear goes away of, uh, you know, uh, can I let these people come in or should I go there? Are you finding the consumer is much more serious today than maybe you know, a few months ago, we're hearing fewer tire kickers, much more serious people. Absolutely no question. Close rates going up. There's no question at all. No question at all. The, the, the days of let's have nothing to do today, so I'm going to go browse in a flooring store. I don't know if we see that. So the vast majority of the clients that come in have a purpose. They're here to purchase floor covering. They, they shop the store and then um, uh, make decisions. So yes, our closing percentage is through the roof. Gotcha. How, how do you think business has changed temporarily and how has it changed permanently everybody talks about this new normal yeah. i don't personally believe in the new normal yeah. it might be a temporary normal some things might be new some things might be temporary what what are you finding to be new yeah, that will a, stick that is a great question because we really are we're wrestling with that same that concept now do we change what we've done fundamentally do we go back to what we've done in the past i can tell you my crystal ball on this is probably no better than yours, but I, I, I tell you what I, I found. Um, consumers of a certain age, um, this is still a touchy-feely business. Uh, when we're talking carpets, they still like to touch it. So from that standpoint, I think that's going to remain, that they still may want to come in for the experience. However, what this has shown us is there are certain customers that can make these types of decisions without coming in. That we send them a sample to the house, uh, they might you know let us come in and, and measure but they may not come in and specifically younger people um i i w was i've got kids that are in their 20s so i sit around when they have parties we would chat and, and and i watch how these kids um communicate how they what they do what's important to them and the way we market isn't even on their radar screen so my daughter now is doing some of our, so our sort of social media uh, and I really take the lead from her. I believe as the younger people continue to age, they're perfectly fine buying material like this online. They're perfectly fine buying a bed in a box, something I would never do, but kids nowadays are doing it. So I think ultimately it will go back to, to a retail situation that we're familiar with. However, the next generation, which has nothing to do with COVID, they're going to be much more apt to say, yeah, I know what flooring is and, you know, I can make this purchase online. So we are sort of adjusting ourselves to be a little bit more internet savvy and, um, you know, how do we attract that type of clientele? Because these millennials, it's a, to it's a totally new ballgame. Jeff, I'm a small retailer somewhere in America. Mm -hmm. You're one of the more successful retailers in this country. Mm -hmm. Give me a couple of pieces of advice that I can, you know, impart okay. into my business to continue to be successful, especially now, um, and get customers into my store? Well, we, this is, we, unfortunately, we had a pretty good model for this in 2008, 2009. So we, we understood what we did back then and what worked and what didn't work and we're doing the exact same thing. So the one thing I would tell any retailer, large or small, 
do not stop advertising. Don't. You know, the, the, the idea is, oh, there's nobody coming in, I'm gonna save this money. Um, we looked at it and said, yeah, we know we're, we might be spending money that we might not see people right away, but it's, this is an investment. We're investing in the future. So back then and today, we didn't slow down at all. We continued to market, we continued to advertise, even when people weren't coming in, we still, so I would tell the same thing, you know, I don't care if you're in whatever part of the country, and we are in very small markets, you understand, so I understand how that is. Um, but we never stopped. We continued to advertise and they kept that name out there. We wanted that um, uh, recognition in the eyes of the consumer. She might not be ready to buy today, but when she is, she's going to say, yes, I do remember I saw that ad, you know, for the carpet store and so-and-so. And there's less noise out there right now. Totally less noise. Uh, right now, amazing values. Almost all of our media partners had inventory that they couldn't sell, so they came to us and said, hey, keep your same ad dollar. We'll give you twice the ads. So we mm. actually increased our, our, our advertising without spending any more money. So I would tell anybody, don't uh, pit, pull in your horns and hide. Uh, continue to be out there. Uh, one other thing, we did not ever run a single ad that said, we know how you feel. We understand. It's really tough out there, you know, with the piano in the background. Nothing, never. It was always positive, always upbeat. Hey, you know, we're in the floor cutting business. We've got some neat things. Uh, no doom and gloom. I think that's a mistake a lot of retailers and manufacturers make. You know, when it, advertising is a low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it's an know, easy cut. It's an easy cut. Not but, a smart one, but it's an easy one. Exactly. Speaking of manufacturers, mm -hmm. we know Shaw, Mohawk biggest ones out there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they do great jobs for you. Mm -hmm. Give me some other go-to manufacturers for Mako's um, that do okay. a good job for you and just tell me why. What do they do maybe a little differently than somebody else? Well, um, I think on the hard surface side, some of the biggest growth we're seeing is probably Cali. Um, the, when the products first came out, it was very niche and it was an online only, but I can tell you first off what they're good at. They're really good at online marketing. They're good. I think that's what they did before they made flooring. Um, they produce a nice product, it's, it's easy, it, it's concise. One of the things I gotta tell you that when they all came in, because they had this big internet presence, we all said, well, we don't really wanna work with you guys because you're selling your stuff online. And they came back with a very good program and said, you know, if you take on our product and someone finds us online, we'll know where they're from, you get the lead. We won't, we won't market them direct, we'll send it through to you. And they have done that 100% of the time. So. People are their word for sure. So we've gotten some really great internet leads, and that and the product is a good product, competitively priced. Um, you know, I think we've picked up some stocking units, so we'll, I'm very pleased with with that product. The other one that I've noticed um, that I see, which has been really good for us lately, has been Dixie. Um, right, you talked about Dixie a little bit. Yeah, well, we okay. had. Um, we're still a large stain master flooring center. We still think the brand resonates in our markets. Our, our salespeople are good with it. So we actually went to a few of our vendors and said, hey, Peppertex has been a very good product for us. Who could come up with a killer program for us? Well, Dixie rose to the occasion. They came up with some um, a, a very nice program item for two or three of the Peppertex programs. Uh, and we looked at it and we jumped all over it. We picked up uh, inventory in several different weights. Um, very good value. Uh, I believe in the eyes of the consumer it'll be a good value as well. So I think that's the one that I, I'm very pleased to see with the performance that we're seeing out of Dixie. I see some good things with that in the future. And their new, new yarn system is just starting to take, uh, take shape. Dixie and Cali. Yeah, those are the two for me. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Jeff, I appreciate all your time. Thanks for coming. This has been Steve Feldman, Floor Covering News, Retail Recovery Across America.